look, I, I'm not, I don't put the, put the wool over my own eyes. I, I know that, look, when you end up on the Knicks, um, there is some trepidation uh, amongst the fan base. It has not, um, we've not had a great couple of decades, um, but I think part of that is because we've never, and RJ Barrett, like, look, we'll, uh, you know, I, your podcast about college sports, you, you know all about RJ Barrett. Sure. We'll see what he becomes as an NBA player. I think everybody, or at least I knew he wasn't going to come in from day one and have the on-court impact. Um, we'll see. His, I think his personality is something that could resonate. Um, how I think everybody's curious to see can Obi come in, and it sounds like he has the personality, but does he have the game that will translate from day one? And I'm thinking back to, and I'm pretty sure this was after Maui, the, the Georgia game. It was like the fifth game of the season. Maui, uh, Maui was Georgia, then Virginia Tech, and then okay. Kansas. Yeah. So <clears throat> the so the, then the first so then the first Maui game. I was watching it the other day. He came out, and obviously he knew every NBA scout was there because Anthony Edwards was in the building too. Yeah. And he put on a show within the first five minutes of that game that I don't. I don't remember another college basketball player doing what he like. He completely he t- he took his fist and he took out their soul. Um, yeah, yeah, like Indiana Jones style. Yeah. What do you think? Like, let's talk about his game a little bit. How do you think that's going to translate to the next level? Well, I think that the one thing that I am always quick to point out from the jump, if Nick's fans are like kind of hesitant to believe he's going to take his game to the next level or whatever, um, he couldn't possibly be better suited to do that. And what I mean by that is like Anthony Grant's an NBA guy. He runs an NBA style offense. And you'll you'll hear guys that do college basketball commentary. They say that. Obi, they think he's going to be ready for the NBA because of that factor. And if you watch our games, you know, if anybody goes back and watches the film, we do run kind of an NBA style offense. It's an inside out, a lot of spacing, a lot of passing, a lot of movement. And, um, you know, like the NBA has kind of moved right from that, like ISO ball to exactly what we're talking about. Oh yeah. And, and the reason is because of guys like Obi, like big, long athletic wings who can shoot the three, who can rebound, you know, that's kind of where the game's headed. So I really haven't had much hesitancy about him making that jump into the NBA for that reason. And then, of course, it's compounded by the fact that, like, he should be a college senior anyways. He took yeah. a year of prep school, then he redshirted, then he played two years in Dayton. So he's 22 years old. Like, if he was, like, uh, the first thing I can, first one I can remember is Tyler Hansbro because he went all four years. Mm. He came out, he was 22, same age, right? So um, I think those two things are going, you know, in the right direction for you guys, or, or they certainly point to being optimistic about him making an impact day one. Yeah, no, it certainly he's not scared of anything. Um, that that was such a big moment, and he came out, and when he did that, I was like, oh my goodness, um, this is this is real. Yeah. But like, it doesn't seem like he's getting to his head either, which will serve him well because if he is successful here in New York, you know, to you know, that's kind of sent a lot of guys down the wrong path. Um, as a playmaker, um, I, I like I could not get enough of his passing this year. I know everybody's really excited yeah. about three pointer. I believe in the shot. I think the touch is there. Um, do you, you know, how much of the offense went through him? Actually, maybe that's the best way to put it. The entire offense was based around him, like point blank. Okay. Like everything they did was how do we exploit the matchup with Obi, and then you know further down the season. How do we take advantage of all the attention that they're giving Obi? And I'll tell you, like you said, you've you've already kind of had a good eye for it that you brought it up. I equated Obi to like um, like a center and a hockey player. Like hockey okay. players, like the one thing that they're super good at above any other guys in other sports is that they anticipate what the next move is because they have to. The game just moves a lot faster, right? You got to know where the puck's going before you even get the puck. Yeah. And Obi is a lot like that on the basketball floor. And you, you saw it last year. Like he did so many passes where he just switched the entire floor and would like throw it over his head point blank into some dude's hands. Yeah. And he knew what he was going to do with the ball before he got it. Um so like that will obviously translate extremely well into the NBA because, you know, the game moves faster up at that level than it did at college. Um, but that's definitely something that shines that a lot of people don't talk about because it's so easy to talk about is dunks. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the I mean, they're impressive. Did, <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're pretty impressive. Like he seems like a, he enjoys like throwing it down on guys, too. I will oh, say absolutely. That. I mean, you, have you seen his dad? He was a street baller and that was what he did. He was called I, Dunker's Delight. 
I talked about uh, we brought up the dad on the on the last podcast. I, I but I need to go like find some tape of that guy because I there not... is yeah it's out there. Just search Dunker's Delight on YouTube. Dunkers it's Delight. out there. Yeah. Okay. But um, but yeah, you know, the, the passing was definitely something that stood out as the year went on. But, you know, to answer your question, like everything Dayton did went through Obi. Um, you know, the way that Anthony Grant designed the offense was so it went that way. Um, and, and, you know, it was smart. Like when you exploit all of the best traits of your best player, it's probably going to work out good for you. And, you know, the other thing that obviously helps in the college game is playing in the Atlantic 10, he was the best player on the floor every single night. Sure. Every every game that we played in, I would say like even the Kansas game, like he was probably a better player than Dotson, even though Dotson went off that game. Mm-hmm. And as a book, he's a better center than him, but he's not a better all around player. So like in that breath, yeah. he really was the best player on the floor pretty much every game. I mean, you could say Anthony Edwards, but like Dayton shut him down and Obi went for like 20, two or 24 that game i mean they cream georgia oh ob oh like again that game was over in the first five minutes yeah it was it really was um, i'm looking it up now the first 10 minutes of the georgia game we were up 26 to 10 ob <laughs> finished with 25 points on seven for eight shooting from two and two for three from behind the arc and and five for five from the charity stripe you love to see fundamentals out of the boy I, uh, yeah. Oh, listen, we have a coach now that apparently fundamentals mean uh, a thing or two, uh, to, to him. Um, Imagine that. yeah. Right. Uh, again, we haven't had it in a while, so we'll take it. 